What is up, RC enthusiasts? Check it out. It has some mods on it right here in this shot. So let's get to this mod video. Well, here we go. To replace the servo gears to the metal gears, you have to remove the two screws that are back here, which I've already done. So one right here and one over there. And all you gotta do is remove this screw right here that connects the steering horn onto the steering shaft right here. And then you just pull up slightly and slide back to get that steering arm out the way out front. We're just gonna remove that shaft there. And with a small screwdriver, you're gonna get back here to the small screws back here. And just pop off the front case right here and it's a good idea to take a picture right now to know which gear goes where so i already know how they go so i'm just going to yank them out and you see this seal right here you got to make sure that seal is on perfectly around like that before you install it or else you're going to ruin the waterproofing of this you're going to have this shaft right here which you're going to need so you're going to pull these two gears off of it and also you see that waterproof o-ring right there you're going to need to pull that off of it because i don't think i see it in the kit included in the new bag so you're gonna need that o-ring right there too i believe so pull that shaft because you're gonna need that shaft right there and that shaft actually just goes and splines into here it only goes in one way like so now let's get our metal gear kit 2064r is the part number for this one well here's the lithium grease right here because we don't want any friction in there anymore because we're gonna have all metal gears as you can tell right here we do have a plastic piece right here this plastic piece actually goes behind this metal gear Right here. I'm not sure why they did that. I wanted all metal gears, man. <laughs> Should be all right though. Telling me I need to install this first, I believe. Telling me to install that gear, and then this gear with a small gear facing down. sits in there and then the next gear that goes on is this gear this gear goes on to here like so the next gear that goes on is this one which goes onto this shaft right here and make sure to spline them all together nicely so you can just spline that into that piece right there and then put this last gear on top of that and it's gonna match on there as well well, there you go, everything assembled. I had to push down hard on this one right here and made sure everything was all splined and lined up because I didn't want to ruin that plastic piece in there, but I did end up getting it all in there all nicely. Put this whole ring on there. And it's on. And of course, don't forget to make sure this o ring is centered before you install everything because if this is off whack, it's not going to seal properly. Let's get some lithium grease on there. Small gears in the bottom, get some lithium grease on them, metal gear, these gears, that gear. And yeah, that's, I'd say it's about a decent amount of lithium grease right there. That should keep it nice and smooth. Kind of overkill, I think, but it should be good. Drop the top half of the case back on. Oh, you just wipe off that excess grease afterwards and just screw everything back on. So after you're done installing the servo, you have to turn on your rig. I have like custom electronics I know on here, but it's the same thing. Turn it on, let it center itself. And the best thing to do on your transmitter, center that, get that to zero. And then put the servo horn straight. I mean, sometimes it won't be perfect straight, but as straight as it, it will go, see if you can tell it's straighter that way, then if I pull it out and install it this way, it's a little less straight. So just figure out which one is the straightest of them, which is going to be this one, then you could use your steering trim to straighten it from there. Now you can go ahead and put the screw back in there, and we'll go ahead and continue installing this. Alright, that servo should last a little bit better than having a plastic geared servo. So let's get this 9779. This is the 
axle gears, full metal. Yup, I haven't broken the plastic ones, by the way. But I do want to fix one up and leave one stuck. Now, the only thing that this thing is missing is the body's not on top of it and the wheels are off. So once you get the wheels off, take the hexes off and the pins off, then we're going to be where I'm at right now. And from this point, it's pretty simple to get these gears in there. By the way, you're going to need some sort of grease because you're going to need to grease these gears once you get them in there. So let's do the easier one of the two. Will be the rear. Take these two screws off right here. You don't have to take them out all the way, just enough. Back one out further than the other one. So that way it's kind of cocked a little bit. So when you pull this bushing out, it'll slip out and you don't need to fully take these screws out. And screw them, not all the way, but one more than the other. And that should help me pull these shafts right out. There you go, see, I was able to pull that right out. Same with the other side. So now you just have to turn the car over and like I showed on my other video on the Defender, you could actually remove these four screws without taking anything else off. So just pull the four screws to hold the diff in place. And then you're gonna be able to slide the ring and pin gear out of there. And obviously on this one, you notice the drive shaft's already off. You're gonna have to pull that off. For the front one, I'll show you how that's done. It's the same thing, but you're gonna have to pull that off. So this one's already pulled off. And I'm gonna take the last screw off right here to remove the diff cover, pop the gears out, put the metal gears in there, and put the blue diff cover on, which is all the mod I'm gonna put on on this one. And then we'll have ourselves a nice metal ring and pinion gear in there to help it stay more beefy, hopefully. And once you have all those screws out of there, you can pull this diff cover off. Oh, as you can tell, the gear actually came with a diff cover. And then you just push the back right here of the pinion gear. And that should pop it out. If not, you know, you stick a screwdriver back there, like I'm about to do right now, to push it out even more. And there you go, that should drop out like so. And since I'm going to be using bushings on mine, I'm going to pull these off of here. It's pretty simple, it just slides off of this, like so. And put those bushings on the metal one. But I'm going to put a bunch of grease all over it. You definitely got to grease these gears, for sure, after you switch them over to metal. Sliding it into the housing. Let me put grease on where the bushings go. And then grease the other side as well. Then put the bearing in there. And then now you can slide it into the housing right here. Like so. Glob some grease in a diff. Then spin it 180 and glob some more grease 180 from that. And that should be more than sufficient grease in there. Let's spin it around a little bit. We could actually put these axles back. They're the same length on both sides, so it doesn't matter which side they go into. Make sure it splines in there on the gear. The bushing in there. There you go. Now I can spin it a little bit so we can make sure the grease gets moved around on the gear and it doesn't get on the diff cover. Now we can put the diff cover on there. Oh, doesn't that look sweet? Yeah, as you can tell, that blue diff cover pops. Looks cool. I like it. And this rig's starting to look cool because it has the anodized blue shocks as well on it already and if you guys want to see an installation video on that i installed the red ones on the defender and i have a detailed a more detailed installation on how to put these shocks together on that video so if you want to check it out check that video out that's the only reason i didn't show it on this video is because i already did it on that and i didn't want to just do the same video again so check that one out it's the same way how to build these shocks we can move on to the front gear is remove these two screws one on top and one on bottom for the steering hub and i'll pull the c-hub off the drive shaft and you can just slide the drive shaft out from here. And that's it, simple. And be careful because when you slide it out, as you can tell, I'm about to lose that pin right there. So don't lose those drive pins. Make sure they slide right out because the only thing that's retaining them in there is the actual bearing or bushing, whichever you have here. That's what's going to be retaining that pin in its location. So make sure not to lose that pin right there. And it'll also be good to get some grease in there right now too. And of course, don't forget to remove the drive shaft right here or else you won't be able to remove the pinion gear. Pull that off. That drive shaft is off. And we'll push out both these gears. There's your ring gear and your two bushings. And then you're going to use your tool right here and push the pinion the rest of the way out right there. And that's it. Now, same thing. I'm just going to grease the ends right here, put the bushings through it, and then I'm going to grease the end of this pinion. And I'm going to do exactly what you saw me doing when I was greasing the gears inside the diff already.
then you can just slide these shafts back in there just remember you have to actually get them to spline on the gear so make sure to turn them a little bit until you slide all the way in and then it turns the gear there you go and then you can just I would just put this right away on both sides so you don't lose the pin your drive pin there you go not protect it from losing the drive pin and the final touch some grease Spin it 180, grease, and just spin it around a couple times, and that should be good. Finalize that look, and screw that back in, put the drive shaft back on the back, and you're good to go. Well, there you go, full metal ring and pinion gear into diffs, aluminum housing on the shocks, Looks pretty sweet. They look even better once these wheels are installed. It looks way better in person. These aren't chrome. They're like a black chrome almost. Like a titanium color. With the ring being blue. And what I really like about these wheels, I like that the ring is blue because that's actually the color of the plastic. So that's the part that's going to be scratched up the most is the ring, not the interior part. So at least that's not going to change colors on you as it gets scratches. And it's just going to stay blue, which is pretty cool. And I got, obviously instead of three because I want the spare to be the same. I'm pretty sure if you guys watch my other videos, you guys already know that I have the Quick Run 1080 in here, my Hobby Porter transmitter and receiver connected to it, and it makes it really smooth with a low range. I mean, super smooth. The stock transmitter and receiver ESC comes close with the low range, but not the, not as quiet as this 1080 is right now, and also not as smooth. And check how quiet it is. This is me hitting the throttle right here. You hear the motor? You don't hear the ASC. No ESC noise. Now the only option I can't install on this right now is the Pro Light Kit. So if somebody out there that's professional at this Pro Lighting stuff or, or Light Kit stuff, is there a way to get this to work if you're not using the stock Traxxas ECM? Because I know this just plugs into the stock Traxxas ECM and talks to it and works with it already. You don't need a light controller, but can I buy a light controller? and use this. I really don't want to go back to the Traxxas one if I can't help it. But if I can't, I really want to use this light kit because these lights are pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to show, these are the brass wheel weights right here. These are 31 grams each. And I did duplicate that with my wheel weights that I have in there right now. I told you guys I'm using my own wheel weights. They, you know, my own hack of a wheel weight. But I weighted them to be this close to 31 grams that these are just to keep the performance the same as Traxxas would want it to be. So I'm going to show you guys how to install this onto your beadlock wheels and you are going to need the beadlock wheels to install these on because these will not install onto the non beadlock wheels and I'm only putting them on the two front wheels. So this is how you install this. You're going to be replacing this ring right here but this one goes in there now and this is what's going to sandwich your tire bead now. So you just slap that in there just like you would the plastic one. Line it up all centered. Once it's all centered and lined up all nicely in there. And then you just pop these on there as usual, like you normally would. There's the front one. Line up the rear one to the holes right there. And then once they're all lined up, you just six screws and you're done. I already showed a detailed build on these with the black sets that I had right here. I showed you guys how to install those. And I kind of showed you how to do it right now too. It's that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these. I'm gonna be installing a set of these right here. These are the BRKRC, you can find these on Amazon. I'll have the link of them below. I'll have a separate video on this guy right here so that you guys can get a more in-depth on this right here. But it does come in foams, and you know, they, these are like a no-name brand kind of tire. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty nice, they feel pretty good. They're close to the tracks, this one's in like, like these ones in softness and stuff. But they do have a thick lug pattern, so probably good for some crawling and some mud too, because you know, no mud will get stuck on there. It does feel like it's got some grip. So this is what I'm going to use to put on those wheels. So you can see right here, those are the canyon trails right there on the method beadlocks. So the same method beadlock size, but the wheels are definitely smaller than those guys. Now this, these tires are gonna rub for sure on this guy, but it shouldn't be too bad. And we'll run this outside 
we'll see how much grip these tires are these tires like i said link below well there you guys go sweet build right there i like it all tracks parts looks pretty cool with the anodized blue shocks you can barely tell in there and the blue diffs yep we have ourselves a blue and white bronco now which is pretty sweet i like it <laughs> All right, let's see how well this guy right here can tackle this terrain right here. Now this is legit crawling. I rock bounce this with my axial rip, so if this doesn't make it, I'm not gonna be too worried about it because it's pretty intense, but I just wanna try it out with all my mods and everything. It's got most of the Traxxas mods on there. And I'm using a 1000 milliamp 2S battery in here. So let's go ahead and let's tackle this. All right, I'm just gonna keep on going straight up. A lot of ground clearance with the bigger tires. Oh, it's very vertical now. Oh, yeah, too vertical, I think. Might have to try to find a different way up. I can't even get any traction right now. Oh, there you go. Traction, come on. By the way, I only have two screws in each beadlock because I don't know if I want the foams in there or not. And maybe for this one, you might not want to have the foams in there. But yep, I only have two screws per beadlock. So if you guys do catch it in the video, that was intentional. All right, we aborted that hill for this hill right here. Maybe we can make it up this. It's a lot less steep, but it's still technical. So let's give it a try. Very loose over here, though. Trading more rocks for less steepness. It's all rocky out here. Let's go slow crawl as much as we can before we need wheel speed. Oh yeah, come on buddy. Show them what you got. <laughs> Did not want to get over that. Didn't want to get over that rock right there. I don't know where to go from here. This is going to be difficult. Yeah, really loose up here. I'm trying to dig in a root so I can get a path. There you go. Oh no, it's gonna roll. All right, back up really fast. It shouldn't roll. Yeah, saved it. But I'm in a very bad place now. All right, well, this is another hard spot for this guy right here, and these are my axial rift lines, so they might look really easy on camera, but these lines are pretty hard right here. Like I said, 10 scale axial rift, I rock bounce up these lines. I don't just slow crawl. And even my 10 scale crawlers have a hard time going up some of this. There you go. Nice, nice. Then we need to go this way. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh no, now I have a rock stuck underneath my rig, which is not a good deal. Yeah. Come on. I'm just gonna be the most extreme line I've done with it. Oh, I'm hung up on that rock. I can just get it off my tail, there you go. Not enough wheel speed in the low range gears. All right guys, thanks for watching. As usual, be safe out there. And as always, have fun and go run that RC.